Well, hello everyone, how are you? I just can't get this light right here. I wanted to show this, it's so cool. But you know, when it's lit up, I might, I might change the light in a little while, but I just kind of feel like being in the dark right now. I'm in kind of a dark mood. Um, thank you all for being so amazing to me. I got spoiled in having such an amazing, amazing group of supporters and all of the love that you guys give me. You guys have absolutely spoiled me. And so although when I started my channel, I was baptized by fire, I was gaslighted and you know, stomped on. And, you know, I just kind of kept myself in an upward trajectory and just really didn't pay attention to all of the drama and the ridiculosity that I feel just wastes people's time. And just really just open myself up to accepting all of the love and the insight that all of you guys have. And it kind of seems to me that, like, you guys haven't seen my ugly fat ass, right? So you guys may not, you know, it's interesting because I don't know what makes people be friends. Do they, do they make friends by what somebody looks like? Or by common interests? In today's world, how do you make friends, right? So because you guys have not seen my fat ugly ass right now, you guys have gotten to know me only by my voice and and who I am and my character and what I've shared with you so far and, and what I will share with you. And that, I believe, has spoken to others in a way that we are speaking to each other because we are all, I don't want to get too corny, but we're all like on the same spiritual realm. Like right now, our friendships and our support right now is not based on color, creed, weight, appearance, hair color, style of clothing, what kind of cars we drive, what kind of house we have if we have a house. We are bonding together by being able to share commonalities and elevated conversation. And in that elevated conversation, we are able to share with each other. And like I say, I'm so proud of you guys because in the comments, you guys are chatting with each other. I get to get around to chatting with you guys and you guys are 100% on point on what you guys are listening. You guys are listening to me. And that is so humbling and amazing. I'm so grateful for that. And every time that I pick up my phone, there's a message there and it's somebody saying something so nice and just being so on point and just right there in the conversation and they get what I was saying. You guys get what I'm saying. So I was out of practice to get the shit kicked out of me yesterday. I forgot how horrible fucking people are. And I didn't see any harm in opening up part of another part of my world to one other part of my world. I introduce you to something that I feel very strongly about in MMIW. And it means a lot because there was people who even messaged me privately and said, what does MMIW stand for? And it stands for Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women. And the fact that my friends, you all, felt comfortable enough to ask me that is amazing because it means that you paid attention for long enough to say, hey, what does that mean? And so the next time when you see that, you'll understand what it means and you might, you might pay attention. Well, I forgot 
that is some kind of fucking taboo that whenever you try to bring up MMIW, you get the shit kicked out of you by people who are in MMIW and it's ridiculous and it needs to stop. And there were other creators before me who've tried to open this door and they got so harassed. They gave up. It's disgusting. It is disgusting to stomp on somebody else for doing the same thing that you're trying to do in sharing and bringing awareness. Because why? Because you decided that somebody else shouldn't? Only you can? Fuck you. Fuck you. I am so disgusted. When I... first heard Jessica's case. I call it a case, right? I was just a mother who saw another mother's cry. I didn't care what color anybody was or I didn't, that didn't even, that didn't even cross my mind. I stayed up for nights and nights on end trying to get awareness, trying to get as much prayer because that's what her mom asked for. Her mom asked for prayer. Then awareness, then justice. And as I shared with you what I did, I didn't share with you because I don't like to talk about it. The massive amount of harassment that I got. And I took it and I took it and I took it and I took it. Because I thought, you know what? Come for me, motherfuckers. Come for me. Because that family and her friends and her children don't need one more ounce of hurt or pain. So if I take that for them, I'm sparing them from it. They've got enough to deal with. And I took it. And I took it. But you know what? I just kept on going and kept on going and sharing and sharing. And I met the most amazing people throughout the world. And we talk about other topics. We've made friends. I've made amazing friends around the world. And I got to a point where You know, I didn't really even give the idiots that would come on and, yeah, I didn't give them a second thought. I was like, okay. I mean, this one bitch, you know, was really serious. She was going to come up and murder me with an axe for daring to share MMIW when I was not indigenous. I figured that, you know what, she must be somebody very close to the family and I must have said something wrong. And when I had the privilege of talking with the family, they'd never heard of that woman and they didn't know who I was, but they knew that I was sharing all of this stuff and I was putting the things that they wanted to get out, that they would put something out that they needed to be shared and I was sharing it and it was hitting a lot of people because I've lived in a lot of different places. And so... It just worked out. And then when um, the rallies for her and for MMIW were scheduled and whatnot, then it was just shared to me by the people who organized them and whatnot. And I had the privilege of meeting her best friends and her family. And I have never, ever exploited that in any way, shape, or form. I have never put anything on the page that they wouldn't want. And I ask first. So when I stopped posting on the page, I did so because it is almost two years ago because I was making the point that I will update this page when something new happens. Meaning that the fuck face gets charged or is going to trial. And I put that very clearly. And I made a point of it. So then every once in a while I get somebody who'd be, you know, would come on and be like, Hey, um, is he in prison for, for the murder? Did he get charged? And I'll, I'd say, 
I made a commitment. I would update this page when that has happened and the, there's nothing new. I've made this commitment. I, you know, I was doing that. But there was something new. There was something new that investigation discovery covered her story. And that's huge because all of the news outlets that we tried wouldn't touch this. And you want to know why they won't touch it? Because of the fuckers who came for me. They come for the people who do these stories. And they threaten that they'll boycott the networks and whatnot. And who's doing this? Who is doing this and why? What right do they have to go and tell somebody else not to share, to bring awareness for justice? Who the fuck do they think they are? They don't want to hear it. They don't want, they don't want to hear it. We'll just go somewhere else. What do you care if I'm sharing something to bring awareness? If so-and-so is sharing something to bring awareness. In sharing, there is power. Oh, gee, did I just say exactly what the fucking problem was? That in sharing, there is power? And somebody else is intimidated by somebody else having the power to share something and have their voice heard? I'm lending my voice to a victim. I'm lending my voice to a cause that needs awareness. And so when somebody from that exact group comes and stomps on me and shames me and calls me deplorable and disgusting, fuck off. Fuck off. I will make sure to share exactly the two fucks that did this to me yesterday. To the biggest organizers that I will reach out to and show that they want to sit there and they want to command and, and have this badge and say all this and I'll show them what they did to me because my work goes without needing a resume. I don't need to say what I've done. I don't need to say who I know. I don't. They'll find out. They'll find out real fucking quick. Make an enemy out of me is the last thing you fucking do. Honestly. People are so stupid. Just stupid. 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 And uh, I'm sure you're listening now, you fucking ugly trolls. Um, you're just stupid. You're stupid. You're stupid. And you're so stupid. Just stupid. So I wrote on my Facebook page that, hey, I started a channel on YouTube. It's kind of true crime, kind of not, you know, but if you hop on over there, you're going to hear about Shanann Watts and um, that I try to bring truth to what happened in that situation um, because I don't believe that the truth has been a factor in that. And so I'm covering Jessica's case as it was just on investigation discovery of which, you know, I'd been sharing the link for that. So everybody could go and see the story put together. Cause that's something to be very proud of. So I said it on my, on the Facebook page for her, justice for Jessica, right? The page that I started that very night. I shared my, my Tabitha Jane YouTube channel to it said, Hey, you know, I covered this, you know, this was on investigative investigative discovery. And so I'm just going to kind of do an outline of what was said and, you know, I can follow up. And if you want to hear it, you know, hop on over to my channel. And like I say, I wanted it to be clear because if they hop on over and they get a different episode and they're like, um, where the fuck am I listening to Shanann Watts? Right. So literally it wasn't even, up for that long and this bitch rams down my throat that she will not listen to what I have done because how dare me use Shannon Watts who was a woman who got justice because her friend was there and, and got justice and that is a person who's already gotten justice and the person who unalived her and the children is already in prison and she received justice. So how dare I bring that case into Jessica's that nope, nope, nope. She will not do it. She will not listen. And that she is a victim of SA 
and that she is a real MMIW and that she is, was the best friend of Jessica. All right. And so I said, ma'am, um, oh, cause she said that, um, I am, I am exploiting Jessica to grow my YouTube channel and that she can see my desperate attempt for clout. So I was like, mm, ma'am, um, I have a YouTube following of about 600. I'm not big. Um, I've had this page since the first night this happened. It's been kind of a, you know, page to kind of chronicle and whatnot for everybody to kind of have a place to have updates and whatnot. I don't really see how that would be getting clout by putting two different areas in which I'm passionate about. Thank you, ma'am. And so this ugly, ugly man, ugly, hops on and says how disgusting I am bragging about my subscriber count and the fact that I brought up my subscriber count shows that I am clout chasing. And so apparently I brought my 600 subscriber count, big YouTube dick out and just flopped it all over everybody and made my dick make a big shadow all over everybody. And so then the two of them, I mean, this man is butt ugly, like, <laughs> If that's actually his pro profile picture, I don't even. Oh. <laughs> and then hers, okay, high bangs. They were out in 1984. But if that's what you got going for you, so then she jumped all over me that you know she is MMIW and she has made all of these changes to the crown in the way that they have done this because she is a real MMIW and that I don't have the right to do this and that and that um that she went and listened to my channel and that I am disgusting and deplorable and, um, uh, shame on me. And then the ugly, oh, ugly man, um, backs her up and is like, yeah, look at her. She's, she's a real S a victim. And, and how dare you talk to her? And I went like, um, this is my fucking Facebook page that I'm spreading awareness on. Because there's about not been any justice. And I'm the one who created this page. And I'm the one who got worldwide attention for Jessica. And I'm the one who, uh, let's just say, uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to say it. I know what I've done. I sleep fine at night. So I contacted. Two people who would know very well whether or not these two have any association to Jessica whatsoever. They don't. These people have never heard of them. And this bitch says uh, that she has 13,000 followers on YouTube and that she is MMIW and I am not. And it's like, what is wrong with you? Why... Are you telling me that I can't share a cause that needs attention? What's wrong with you people? This is why so many other creators who have tried to share and be a part and join and stand beside in front. And take the bullets. They don't expect them to be taken from the same side they're fighting on. The hell is wrong with you? It's disgusting. Disgusting. And there needs to be a reckoning within the community that if anybody in the MMIW community is proven to be attacking other people who are trying to help and share, they're, they're gone. The fuck out. Let the people who want to help, we all bleed red. If, 
if you're so shallow and closed minded that you think that somebody else can't share something because you're sharing it, you're not part of a cause to bring attention to those who need it. You're a part of something to go and gain notoriety for yourself in your own ego. And that's disgusting. Go make your own tree house and call it yours and have your own club and fuck right off. But when people are missing and there's still a chance to find them alive. And these notices come out and you can tell them now and they're MMIW. They're saying, hey, look, nobody pays attention when indigenous girls, native girls are missing. We want you to pay attention. We're, we're part of a group that wants a, wants you to spread this awareness. Should I call him up and say, hey, um, this bitch right here and this ugly man said that I can't share it. So I'm sorry, but I can't share it because this ugly man and this uptight bitch with 13,000 followers who thinks that she's made a difference to the crown said I can't. Mm. Does that make sense to anybody? This is what goes on. I was talking to a good friend of mine. And she's working on a case. Where the dad has been instrumental in doing everything to try to find his son that's been missing. He gets harassed by people telling him. The same things that were said to me. Because it all happens to us in the in the twats community, right? It comes up and somebody's gonna say, you know, oh, they're their family, they're their friends, that what they're saying, you know, they'll they'll get in the chats and whatnot and they're like, Oh shit, you know, it's their family or their friend, you know, you don't want to say this, you know, or whatever, offend them and then you ask them a question that they would know the truth to, and then you find out that they're not, they're just trolls. Right? So then if you're somebody who sees that there's a cause, a person missing that needs attention, and you get this message that says, you know, well, I'm I'm so-and-so's brother, and I don't appreciate what you're doing, and then you need to pull this page down and whatnot, and you're like, oh, shit, you know, okay. Well, it's the brother. You find out it's not their brother? I mean, this is what's going on. A dad who is trying everything to find his son and raise awareness is getting harassed by people telling him not to share it. Now, when Jessica's mother started her Facebook post, the police came up to her and told her to take it down. She had to. Why? Why? Well, because they were getting calls telling them to do their job and they had decided they're not going to do their job. So shouldn't that enrage everybody and say, look, we don't live in anarchy. And when a beautiful young mother is murdered by some monster who just got out of prison and is violating every single aspect of his parole in the open in front of everybody. But we're just supposed to say, mm, yep, that's what they do when they come out of prison. Yeah, let's not talk about it. Don't, don't, don't say anything about it. Okay. Cause I don't want to do my job today. Like I say, what kind of backwards ass thinking and anarchy? And who are these people? If you don't want to see something, don't look. If you don't want to hear something, don't listen. You don't want to go to my YouTube and listen. Okay. But you don't need to pontificate on it and shame me and bring some ugly, ugly, ugly man with you to then say the same thing. 
and then say that that you have a YouTube following of 13,000 and I don't have the right to share anything and that I should be ashamed and I'm deplorable and blah, blah, blah. I don't, what, what, like, I don't, who are these people? And, you know, like I say, I was, I was used to it. I dealt with it a lot. And I was out of practice because you guys are really nice to me. I have a freaking community of 600 sisters right here with me. And some brothers too. And we all are vibrating at the same level. Okay. I don't know how to explain it. But we're all, we don't know what each other all looks like, drives, what kind of car, what they we're wearing or whatever, but we're connecting because we're talking. That means that we're all like on the same like spiritual level. Like, I don't know how to explain that. I really don't. Other than saying that there's some of us who are able to see past the surface. We were able to hear what others can't and we're able to relate and understand. And if we're here and we're having a conversation and somebody else doesn't get it and doesn't like it, we'll fuck the fuck off and just fuck off. And that's, that's really all that needs to happen for fuck's sake. Just fuck off. So anyway, thank you all for being so nice to me. And I actually had somebody from Australia say that I was like an Australian because I understand things on a different level than other people. And that like, maybe I'm an Australian and like, I wanted to explain what happened to me in Australia. When I went to Australia, the way that the Australians say is they say Australia and I say Australia. Well, when I went down there, I was mistaken for a hooker. I don't know what the problem was. But every time I try and walk across some freaking cobblestone ass streets, and they don't stop for pedestrians. See here, here, you have to stop for the pedestrians, especially, you know, in the little, little squares. You have to stop for them. Not the same in the land down under, okay? Not only does the water from the toilet swirl the other way, it's the same backwards-ass way for pedestrians. You do not cross the street if a car is coming. They do not care. They will try to to run you over. But the only way that I did not get ran over a couple of times was because these men were stopping and honking and, and yelling out, and they were like, How much? How much? And I'm like, what? They're like, how much money, bitch? How much? How much? How much? I'm like, what? I'm like, oh, you think I'm a hooker? <laughs> well, all I'm going to say is, you know what? It's a currency accepted worldwide. You know, they say don't ever leave the house without your Visa MasterCard. Well, <laughs> hooking is apparently a worldwide currency. I'm just going to say that. I mean, I was, I was really surprised that I was like, I was, you know, like standing there almost getting ran over and confused, but also flattered in the same right that, oh, I look like an Australian hooker. And I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but apparently I do. So anyway, back to our regularly scheduled um, programming and I must get to the basics here and we must go to here we are truth warriors yes TW hashtag truth warriors yes and whatever I do on my channel on my Facebook or whatever I'm just spreading the truth and if you don't like it Go fuck yourself. And um, there are no twats allowed. Okay? There are no twats. So I don't want to sniff you out. This is my channel. And if you're a big smelly twat, I don't want you in my community. Okay? This is a twat-free community. And let's see what else I've written. No, it's like, you know what? I'm going to go put on another light. You know, because I just... Oh, now that I can 
think a little bit clearer. I don't know. I'm just not getting the, the that sign the way I wanted it to. The light will hit it weird or not. Just so cute. All these things I find from the Dollar Tree, you know? Look at that. Stirring up magic and a wicked witch and cast a spell. Toil and trouble, Salem brooms, mystical brews and black cats. And there's like three of them and they're together and they're like making a little wall mural. I'm going to put one of each each time. I just, I'm telling you, I'm really liking, liking the Dollar Tree decor. So anyway, in my notes that I have taken on questions that you guys have asked and what you guys are talking about. Okay, so on the picture that I posted that may or may not have been an advertisement for the glass house. Now, for those of you who do not know, um, Hot Ham Radio, um, I don't know if Hot Ham Radio is a man or a woman because I isn't a ham radio like a, um, like a CB? Isn't that a trucker? Well, hot ham radio, will you tell me if you're a man or a woman? Or you prefer not to answer or <laughs> identify? Probably can't ask that. Um, anyway, hot ham radio had posted the last thing that SW was tagged in on Facebook. It has since been deleted, but it was to a place called the Glass House. And it had a number of people tagged, and one of them was SW. And you would have to have been a friend of SW for it to have went on the page the way that it was. And upon further investigation, the glass house was not necessarily a location. It was, you know how Heidi Fleiss had a black book and Heidi Fleiss's black book had the names of all of the girls that would you know, specialize in this or that, or, um, which client liked this person or that. And all of the focus was over Heidi Fleiss's black book. Well, it was rumored that the glass house was kind of, uh, the equivalent of Heidi Fleiss's black book. And it was kind of in that lifestyle, you know, where she was, uh, she was, um, well, it looked like a brick house, but maybe hers was called the glass house. Let's just say that. And, um, so I've been getting these emails and the people who, um, knew of the glass house and it's interesting. It's, it's, I mean, and this is of course before she had kids. Um, usually after you have kids, you just. It just doesn't work out to be an escort anymore. The Johns are really weird about you bringing a diaper bag and the kid with you and stuff. So you kind of have to stop being an escort once you have kids. I mean, unless you can find a good babysitter that's available 24-7. A whole nighttime thing, you know. Anyway, um... The only bad thing about escorting and hooking, pimping, it looks so bad on a resume. HR, it, you know, they, they say they're all not supposed to be judgmental in today's, you know, world. But you try and put on a resume that you were a hooker or a lady of the night. You worked, um, you know, as an exotic dancer. You, you just... You just don't, 
get a good read on the other side of the table when you fill that out on your resume. So I've heard. So what I was kind of told, and I mean, kind of summing it up, is that, okay, you know, in the 80s and 90s and like, think of, think of uh, Vegas and, you know, the concierge, you can go up to the concierge and be like, hey, where do I get the best steak in town? You know, they're going to say, oh, Ruth's Chris, where do I get the, you know, the best, um, the best seat in the house? You know, who sells the best tickets for the shows? Oh, you know, and go over there and, you know, oh, Bobby's going to hook you up. And where do I get the fastest girl? Oh, well, then, you know, you're going to want to call Sammy, you know, or you're going to call the glass house. You know, I mean, that's what I'm saying is that, like, the glass house was a concept, not a construct, not necessarily that. So Hot Ham had um, posted those two screenshots from that last um, tag. And like I said, it's been scrubbed from her Facebook since then. But she had posted them on one of the first nights that she went live. She was kind of, you know, like, you know, hey, this is something that, you know, I've kind of held back on. And um, she heard me talking one night on apparently <laughs> a channel that um, the person who I was talking on was so famous that doesn't remember it, but we talked for four hours on the subject and, and, you know, and how that, that concept could have really played itself out because the rumors are out there The you know, the rumors, the stories, so whatever, you know, are out there and it, it is what it is. It's like, you know, it, I, I don't know why, if that was indeed part of who she was before she had children and whatnot, why that is a bad thing and why that is um, something to be ashamed about. I, I don't, I don't find that a shameful thing. Um, I think that it's really interesting how she has been um, redefined after her, leaving this world. Um, she was put into, uh, she was painted into a corner, um, with a, and nothing that is true. And it's just like, I finally got my laptop, got my laptop fired up and started reading the discovery. And I was just absolutely Watts Tourette'sing around the house because I was able to see with my own eyes for the first time how many mistakes there are, how much none of it makes sense, how bad procedures were broken, um, how the cart was pulling the horse, and how somebody with a voice like this was running the investigation and you just go wait a minute isn't there a um professional in Colorado and then you go you know John Benet Ramsey and you just shake your head and go, is it the altitude? What happens in Colorado? Because they don't follow the constitution and they don't follow procedures and they don't conduct themselves in a professional manner and they fucked up and no, there has not been justice for Shanann. You dumb bitch who came for me and that ugly man who came for me. There, no, no, no. And like I say, isn't it funny? Because that 
person with a very narrow mind thought that I was like, ah, I, I, I have a channel for Shanann Watts. And then you can come and talk about Jessica too. Like dumb bitch in your closed mind. I bet you that if you really work hard with that closed mind, you might get yourself to the mailbox and back. Anyway. Oh, oh Lord. I was told a few hours ago that Neeks Peaks did a new video. And, ah, uh, what? I may need to stop this to go look. Neeks Peaks. Neeks Peaks is where it's at. Neeks Peaks has done a tremendous job. A tremendous job. Hold, please. 